The following video has been created without the use of AI and is written and narrated by me. Please support your human content creators by commenting and liking the video. Where is the human? shouted Papyrus into the house of their cozy little home in Snowden. The tall skeleton had been looking for you all day and was worried you might have traveled too far and had gotten lost. He heard a grunting, although the voice was too deep to be yours. Sans! Papyrus trotted forward into the living room. Sans! He shouted where his brother's ear would have been if he had skin and muscles. Which caused Sans to jolt up from his sleep. Oh jeez! Sans rubbed over his head. Ah, good morning, Pap. It's evening. 6 p.m. in fact, Sans. Sans blinked, his gaze turning to the cuckoo clock in the corner of the room. Well, I'll be. I shall be gracious to you, brother, for my ayah isn't with you. Sans snorted. <laughs> well, that's something new. In fact, it is with the human. They have vanished. Sans blinked. Wait, Frisk's gone? From one second to the next, Sans was widely awake. You, Sans, and Papyrus had been living together for a couple of weeks now. You had crashed on their couch. Even given a rather silly cardboard box disguise that fooled only... No one, except for Undyne and occasionally Papyrus. Maybe a few monster kids. The problem was that, despite that, the guards posed a massive danger to you. And if you were captured, there was no doubt in their minds that your soul was forfeit. And it would be the last soul, too, that would allow Asgore to power through the barrier. Luckily, you were content in Snowden. Relatively speaking. But the skeletons had forbidden you to leave the frosty, snow-powdered caverns. Simply by virtue of the fact that Undyne trusted the two skeletons and the royal dog pack, as incompetent as they were, enough to report human activity to her should one be found. Additionally, she visited once per week for Papyrus's cooking lessons. Those usually two to three hours you spent at Grillby's with Sands playing pinball or eating burgers. Sometimes even play cards of the dog guards who had accepted you as just a tall, weird puppy without fur. How quaint. So, the brothers' fear of you not being here was understandable. They housed you. They fed you. In fact, the entirety of Snowden had accepted you as a resident. They would all but be put under tribunal, more than likely as traitors, should you ever be caught. Luckily, Papyrus hasn't rang the alarm to the other Snowden residents yet, which prevented a panic. And punishment for you, should you be found. Well, let's just go through this one by one, said Sans with a hand on his forehead. His invisible magical heart was pumping quite fast. He was trying to stay calm. When have you last seen... Uh, them? Sans paused before saying them as he knew that you were a girl and there was a high likelihood the immature Papyrus may start acting weird around you if he found out that you were in fact not a man or a they-them. Not in a creepy way, but in a way that made it obvious to Undyne and the other royal guards that he was hiding something. Well, let me think, Sans. The virus began a quick rundown of the day. In embarrassing detail. Pappy, Pappy, this is the third time you told me you sat on the toilet. Just get to the point. Papyrus gnashed his teeth. Well, long story short, I have seen the human last before I started to calibrate my puzzles in the forest. Sands went into thought. Wait, in the forest? So they were with you? 
About halfway, I was working on my spaghetti puzzle when they were gone, suddenly, and I can't find them. The level-headed Sans looked down at his feet. Where have you looked? Everywhere. You mean the town? Papyrus nodded. I even asked if they came through, but no one has seen them. Okay, Sans knew where you were. He was sure of it. The small statured skeleton jumped up. Pep? Huh? Eh? Take the day off. But... Sans reached up to his brother, placing a bony finger on its teeth. Listen, Pep. You did all your work now. And now, I'll start going at it. Got it? Don't worry. I won't come home alone. I promise. Where's this coming from? This is a little too diligent for you, Sans. Sans walked over to the house's door casually with his hands in his pockets. I should say I'm just as worried as you are. I just... Aren't a little scaredy bones like you. He winked, managing to leave through the door quick enough before the angry papyrus could throw a pillow at him. Descending the doorsteps, he sighed. Oh, Frisk. Why do we always cause trouble for us? You're sitting on the cold ground. You had used the borrowed shovel to get rid of the snow, to make it more comfortable to sit on the naked rock. Still, it was freezing and a little wet. Your back was pressed against a stone door that was just slightly emanating warmth. You exhaled out of your mouth. Your knees pulled up to your chin as you hugged them. You watched your breath go past your lips in a fine mist. Uh, Undine came again, you muttered. Almost caught me. Surprised me too. Papyrus forgot to tell us she changed the schedule for the week. The entire time I was under the sofa. <laughs> Glad I just barely fit. Well, small breasts are good for one thing at least, huh? Your lips quivered. It was really cold. Maybe you should go home soon. Not like Toriel was actually behind there anyways. You just did this for your uh, own peace of mind. You chewed on your lower lip absentmindedly, feeling over the unique pattern of your upper teeth. Until you continued. Sand still does let me into his room. Well... Doesn't let me into his room since he knows I'm a girl, that is. I mean, I already saw it, so I don't quite get the point. Why secrecy now? The skeleton accidentally walked in on you, taking a shower in the bathroom a couple of days ago. I also discovered monster chocolate tastes just like human chocolate. Just a little less sweet. It's pretty alright. You looked at the tip of your boots. I miss you, Mom. Toriel had made you feel like a kid again. Sometimes you wondered if it had been a good idea to leave her, but at the time you still saw this as a threatening scenario. It took Sans and Papyrus to truly realize this place could be a home. And... A much more exciting home than the old world, at least. It was easy for you to accept Toriel as your mother figure, though. Your own parents had died when you were 20. Well, not actually physically dead, but they were hardliners when it came to growing up, and they dropped any support for you when you turned 19. And since your 20th birthday, you haven't exchanged any pleasantries between you and them. They were... Metaphorically dead to you. One of the reasons you had come to Mount Abbott was because of the help that you needed and weren't receiving. It was a last out. Heck, 
for all you knew, what you actually attempted did work, and all this was was just last moment delusions of a dying woman. And Toriel had offered you a feeling of nostalgia you thought you'd never feel again. Hey, Frisk. You shook and jumped, even screamed a bit. What the fu- A bony finger was pressed on your mouth. Uh, uh, uh. Remember Peppy's swear jar? It's quite full now, you know. You narrowed your eyes into an annoyed deadpan. Sans was pressing his finger so hard, he practically sealed your mouth shut. After a moment of almost awkward silence, he pulled his hand away. You crossed your arms, turning away. Peppy's looking for you. He's worried sick. Really? I, I told him I'd be, you know, looking around. Sansa's left eye socket widened. The skeleton way of raising a brow. Even though you and everyone else called them skeletons, Sans and Papyrus looked... cartoony. The proportions were all wrong and soft and gentle even, and could stretch and adjust into facial expressions. Heck, touching them didn't even feel like bones. As such, they were way less scary and much more expressive. It was difficult to comprehend as you grew up in a world without monsters, but thankfully, Sans, being a smartass, had just simply declared, how about before you get a headache, you imagine us as bugs, eh? The magic sinew holding our bones together is just what holds the chitin together. Imagine that. That should be easy for you. And he was right. After that, it was easier to comprehend their biology and you no longer felt strange around them. Well, he was worried. He even woke me up. He stretched. Man, just 14 hours of sleep. How am I supposed to get anything done today? I'm so tired. You smirked. Anyways, what are you doing here? You must be frozen down to the bone. Eh? Down, down to the bone? Get it? Because I'm a skeleton. <laughs> I was... I was wondering. When I came by the store and... A feeling of nostalgia overcame me. That's all. I see. He smiled, but you could hear the concern in his voice. Well, do you want to stay here until you're a frisksicle, or do you want to come to your warm home and maybe order some takeout from Grubby's? He rubbed over your shoulder the thought. Uh, honestly? Yeah. I like that. Okay, then go ahead. You took a step forward, but then furred your brows. Wait, why aren't you coming? I gotta take a leak. You blinked. Wait, what? From his jacket, he pulled a green leak. See? Right. You blushed and then smiled at the visual pun. <laughs> Why are you blushing, Frisk? Nothing. Never mind. Sans watched as he slowly slumped towards the bridge that led to the rest of the forest, leading to Snowden. When he was sure you were out of earshot, he turned to the door. Hey. I know you're there, old lady. I know you could hear us. Was Frisk talking to you? Sans waited a moment, but he didn't get an answer. But as he pressed his skull against a stone, he could hear the quiet hint of sobbing. Well, um, you seem busy. But I'm keeping an eye on Frisk. Don't you worry. He gently tapped the stone. I'll be going now, he said gently. Next time, let's exchange more puns, huh? It was late at night. You were lying on the Scalabro sofa, 
Blanket pulled up to your chin. Papyrus wasn't angry when you returned. He was just relieved. And he apologized for not hearing you say that you'd be just over there. Bored, you stared at the TV. It played a monster version of How I Met Your Mother, called How I Met Metaton. It was excessively boring, and the comedy extremely predictable. Just like the human variant. Well, maybe it had less sex jokes. And yet, whenever Metaton's character said his punchline, Oopsie Whoopsie, you couldn't help but chuckle. It always came as a complete underreaction to the crap going on in the show. Suddenly, you heard a creaking from the stairs. And curiously, you moved your eyes. A frisk. Could you still up? He was only wearing his shorts and loafers as he approached you. You pulled your legs closer to you to give him room to sit. And he jumped down with a deep sigh, leaning against the backrest of the sofa. <sighs> so, um, you seriously watch that crap? Oopsie whoopsie, shouted Metaton, followed by the audience laughter. Uh, only to fall asleep, too. He mumbled. Sans chuckled. <laughs> but I can tell you wide awake. You're not going to sleep anytime soon, aren't you? You sighed, sat up, and then felt your left until you landed on its lap with your upper body. Yeah, pretty much. You mused. After a minute, you could feel Sansa's fingers glide through your hair, making you inhale through your mouth with mild excitement. How do you feel, Frisk? Spend a long time in the cold? On the ground, no less. Do you, like, have a sickness coming? Nah. Ever since I started drinking that monster milk, I haven't felt sick at all. You know it's baby food, right? And you know humans drink milk regularly, right? Even as adults? He chuckled. <laughs> yeah, sure thing, kiddo. I'm 22. He shrugged. You still act like one. You rolled on your back to look up at him. And he smiled down at you. You know I'm an adult. Oh. You narrowed your eyes, and a glowing blue blush appeared on his face as he realized what you meant. Frisk, come on. You came down here half naked already. Sans sighed, raising the volume of the show which made you smirk. You got up on all fours and pulled at your blanket, revealing that beneath... You were naked. Sans gnashed his teeth. Since the day he knew you were a girl, the two of you had been doing it almost daily. You saw it as repayment for staying, as well as a bonding experience with a guy you liked. But he, well, Sans found it difficult to resist your charm and sinful figure. But he was ashamed. He promised the old lady behind the door he'd protect you, and because of that, he felt dirty whenever he touched you. Oopsie whoopsie! Went the show. Again. You squeezed your chest to make them look bigger. Frisk, I... His pen started glowing blue. His body was reacting without him wanting to. And then you reach for the pants. Uh, he felt your touch as you pulled at his shorts, eagerly. You know Peppy could hear, and... Uh, 
His eyes rolled back at the feeling you were giving him with your mouth. He inhaled sharply and then reached with his bony arm under your blanket. After all, it would be a shame if he's the only one feeling good tonight. Right? Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members. Especially my darling stewards. HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, MysticJade111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.